What's up guys, welcome to today's episode where we are going to do a little Q&A because I've been getting some pretty decent questions lately and I figured I would just run through some of those and answer them on camera um, just to kind of go into a little more detail on some of these and some of these are more so just for some laughs. So, but before I do that, I want to let you guys know that Redcon 1 Again, Redcon 1. Bringing back the Black Friday sale for one more day, today only, until midnight, because they had a lot of requests for people that missed it. It was obviously a big success, but it's the Black Friday sale where if you spend $50, they give you $125 worth of free stuff. So if you spend $50, you get $125 worth of free stuff, and that's $50 after a 33% off sale. So or discount. So if you buy, say, if you wanted to try Total War and Big Noise, the perfect pre-workout, if you bought those together, you would be able to take 33% off those. It'd cost just over $50, and you would get with it a gym bag, a hoodie, um, a shaker bottle, and a challenge coin. You would get those four items for free, and you would get to try out Total War and Big Noise for $50. So use my link in the description box below that will give you a direct link to the site and connect you to my account to give me credit for the sale because let's face it, that's why you guys are using Redcon 1 is to help support the channel, help support me because you like what I do and you like the content that I put out and uh, you like Redcon 1 because I like Redcon 1. All their shit is very good. You won't regret it. So. Um, that's that. Moving on, let's get to these questions. We got some good ones. Okay, so, hi Chase, perfect as always, talking about the video. You said that trend is perfect for cutting or for pre-contest, but a lot of body builders, and including Greg Doucette, cut off trend a week or two before the show. What do you think? It is very weird that trend is the most androgenic and anabolic than tea but do not cause water retention. So he's talking about when I said on my cut, I would use Trend for like the last four to six weeks of a cut and basically no other time. And he's like, why would you use it all the way up to the end of your cut when these guys cut it off two weeks before um, show day? Well, number one, I'm not doing a show. So this is just for my own personal uh, goals and and to entertain you guys with you know bulking cutting and sharing my experiences so I'm using it not yet I will use it next year for about four to six weeks depending on how I feel and how things go which will be the end of my cut I just ended my bulk I'm gonna take about two months to get as healthy as possible and and really it's not gonna change much between that and my cut um, but I'm just kind of cruising through the next two months, lifting hard and focusing on getting my blood work as healthy as possible. And then I'm going to start reducing calories, increasing cardio a little bit and starting to shred out a bit. And I'm probably just going to do it on testosterone. And then the last four to six weeks, I'm going to add in Trend uh, because Trend does do something that no other product does and it just gives you a look that no other product can give you so yeah that's why he's asking you know he's saying most of these guys cut cut trend out they actually cut everything out you know about a week or two before their show because just doing injections in general causes inflammation causes uh, swelling in those areas causes lumps in those areas so um, if you're getting on, show, on, a, on a stage, you certainly don't want injection lumps or anything like that. That's the, probably the main reason why people cut out all of that stuff. Um, so yeah, that's why, I, I mean, I totally agree with them that, you know, if you're going to go on stage, you should definitely cut it off a week or two before you get on stage. So um, totally agree with that. And... He goes on to say, I find that Trend drops cortisol and aldosterone down, um, and that uh, prevents the water loading. Um, I totally agree that I believe that it will help you drop water weight, but I don't think it's from cortisol dropping. I mean, he might have gotten a blood test and that happened that showed for him, but 
the fact that Tren makes it so difficult to sleep that you get very poor sleep on Trenbolone, I highly doubt that for most people it will drop your cortisol levels. So that is that. All right, next question is from Joseph Aguilar. Dumb question I know, but I just did my meal prep monster mash, just lunch. What do you, re what do you recommend for dinner and breakfast? Yeah, I don't, my brain doesn't work in breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, I have, like, I don't know, it, it really more so depends on what kind of time you have, what, I feel like a lot of people are in a hurry in the morning. So, you know, that's where I try to, when I'm prescribing people meal plans, I will set it up so it's something that they don't have to cook. So they can just, you know, whip together, eat it, drink it, whatever, and get to work. Um, so that could be like uh, yesterday's video, my meal six, the yogurt, the Greek yogurt meal. That's really quick and easy to put together. I'll prescribe that for a lot of people as their first meal of the day. But the thing is, like when I put a meal plan together for somebody, I specifically say, you can have these in any order. Like if you particularly want something first thing in the morning that's in this list, then have it. It's just you can't have it you know, later on in the day unless I have that meal placed in there two times, you know. Um, but yeah. So this guy's question, what do I recommend for breakfast and dinner? I mean, I mean, you could eat Monster Mash for three meals. Like, I eat four meals of this a day. The only things that change are the meat amounts, the meat type, um, the vegetables, the fruits that I have. Like, this is cranberry juice with water. Um, but yeah, I essentially have Monster Mash four times a day. And then I'll usually have a protein shake somewhere in there. And then the last meal that I have in the day, you saw last night, yesterday, um, that video I had a yogurt meal uh, with oatmeal and cinnamon and berries. So the, the simplest answer to your question is have Monster Mash for every meal. Like, what are you, what are you worrying about? You know. Next question is from Quentin Wallace. What is your opinion on D-Ball? Can the water weight be controlled with an AI? So this brings up a lot of uh, a lot of things. But let me take a bite because I haven't. I need to eat this. So my opinion on D-Ball. I think it's great. I think it's a great. Uh, hormone. Um, it's a great oral. It's great for strength, size, all of that. Um, you know, I, I think it's a, a very well tolerated hormone. However, it is going to <clears throat> take a toll on your lipids. It's going to take a toll on your liver. So those are things that you always have to consider. Is it worth, is what it's going to do for you worth messing up your blood work a little bit and that's where you have to just you know choose your battles basically um can the water weight be controlled with an ai so i have a problem with this if you're not if you're not comfortable if you don't want to experience water weight then pick different hormones you know because water weight doesn't come on just from estrogen alone. Water weight can come on from testosterone being very high. And the fact that it does come on, you know, with high estrogen conversion, we want that high estrogen conversion. Estrogen builds muscle too. That's something that a lot of people don't realize is that when you start blunting your estrogen by fucking around with these AIs, you're limiting your progress. You're limiting gains by limiting estrogen. Estrogen should not be like the the range, like when you get your blood test done, the range of where your estrogen should be, you should be in that range if your testosterone is in the natural range. So if you're using something that's going to increase your testosterone, your estrogen should be out of range. Like if your testosterone is out of range, your estrogen should be out of range. They work together in a balance to maintain some sort of homeostasis. Now, if that causes you to get gyno, so what? Like, that's something that we have to deal with. That's something that you need to be 
you should be, if you're worried about gyno, you should not start using gear until you have $5,000 saved up in the bank so that if and when you get gyno, you can go get the surgery to get that shit cut out so you don't have to worry about it ever again. That's kind of off topic, but that's the thing. I feel like a lot of guys are scared to death to get gyno. And if you're scared to get gyno, then you should not just, you shouldn't be using. You shouldn't be using any of this stuff. If it's not worth it to you to build the amount of muscle that you should be wanting to build if you're getting on gear, you should be willing to get gyno and having you get that cut out. Otherwise, you don't want it enough. <laughs> like, I, I mean, you don't you don't want it enough. Like if you're, if you're not willing to grow boobs to build muscle, then it's not just stay natural because that's a risk that many of us have taken. And I've gotten gyno surgery. Like it's part of it. It's, it's just the way that it goes. And let me tell you something, when you get your gyno surgery, there's nothing that feels better after that when knowing that it's never going to come back and as long as your doctor did a good job. But uh, I absolutely do not think that you should ever use an AI to control your water weight. I don't think you should ever try to blunt your estrogen unless your estrogen is way out of range compared to what your testosterone is. And an easy way to, to look at that is to be like, what's the range of estrogen that we're supposed to be in? What's the range of testosterone that, we're be, that we'll be in? You'll find that there's a ratio between those two. And then use that conversion to be like, okay, if my testosterone is at 5,000, what can my estrogen be at? And still be considered normal. And if you don't know how to do that math, you probably shouldn't be on steroids. So yeah, I, it's just, there are way more negative side effects to trying to lower your estrogen and have low estrogen than there are for having estrogen too high. Okay, to have estrogen to be zero or super low, which a lot of these guys that use, like many people get on gear and they're like, I've got an AI on hand. I, d I don't care. Like that's, I like I have AIs on hand, but that's if if I'm really feeling like something's wrong. But that doesn't mean I'm even going to use them. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to go get a blood test. I'm going to check my estrogen levels and my testosterone levels to see where everything's at. And if something's way out of whack, then it, that's that's the point that you want to go work on that otherwise otherwise you're most likely doing more harm than good so that's why i make these videos that's why i make these videos talking about getting your blood tested how to get it done how to do it you know how to do all this safely and smart so that you're not just guessing because a lot of people are just guessing they're just like I feel bloated, my estrogen must be high, uh, I'm gonna take an AI, and... And then the next thing, their dick doesn't work, and they're like, uh, steroids broke my dick, I don't know what's going on, I hate steroids. And it's just like, it's because you have no estrogen now. You Your estrogen wasn't high, you got fucking pill happy, started popping aromacin, and now you have zero estrogen, and you have zero dick. <laughs> and then you're gonna blame the testosterone, or the DECA, or the D-ball, or whatever, because you don't understand how the body works because you didn't go get a blood test to go check it out and see what's actually going on because this whole thing is just straight up science and it's not fucking magic. Moving on. Eddie Espinal asks, Hey Chase, where's a good site to order gear online? All right, I get this question a lot. I get this question way too fucking much. And I answer it the same. I answer it the same. I tell you exactly where you can go to get it. However, the problem is, is if you're not a member of this board, you will not be able to use their sources. And I don't think that they're accepting new members right now. So I'm sorry, but you guys are SOL. But I will tell you, go to gh15.org, make an account, 
make a request to become a member, and then you've got to become a member, and then you have to get wizard status on the forum by being a contributing member, by showing that you're willing to learn and you're trying to learn and that you're sharing good information because that board only wants experienced people and the best users and people that are going to be smart and not reckless with their gear use. And, and if you act like a fool on there and just go in asking where are the sources, they'll ban you. They'll kick you out because they realize that's what you're there for. So I'm going to tell you again, gh15.org, but you're, it's highly unlikely that you're going to be able to get in there. But that is the only place that I 100% trust to get anything from, to get absolutely anything that I would ever want. That's where I would go. And I can't recommend anywhere else because I don't trust anywhere else. So that's where you can go. And if you can't become a member, if you can't get in, that's not my problem. Like that's, yeah, that, that's not, that's not my issue. From Chris S. Hey bro, I'm 16 years old and I don't know if I should use HGH. I'm five foot three and I play soccer. My answer to you is should I, should I use HGH? The answer is no. You shouldn't use HGH. It's not gonna help. It's not gonna make you taller. Sorry, bro. It's too late. You're 16. I mean you can waste your money and you can try, and if you get taller, congrats, but highly unlikely. And you'll probably do more harm than good. So don't do it. Okay, next question is from Chuotu Patil. Please, sir, make a videos for weight gain, bulking diet plan, cooking recipes. All right, I just spent the last 16 weeks where at least at least once every single week, I did a full day of eating on my bulking plan that was 5,000 calories a day. That means you've got at least 16 videos seeing everything that I eat in a day. Of all my recipes, of everything that I ate, what more could you ask for? There was one day in there, I think I did four days in a row of full day of eating. So. Um, there's, don't be lazy. Don't just force me to hand you information. Look around a little bit and you'll find exactly what you're looking for. Araya Zach, watching a lot of your meals, I've noticed that I've never seen you use butter. I use Kerrygold butter in one of my meals for the fats. What's your, what's your opinion on butter? And I mean real butter. So I love Kerrygold butter. I think it is amazing. I love it. It tastes fantastic. And let me tell you, if I was natural, I would use it every day, probably every meal. Um, but the thing is, is because I am not, I feel like the body responds to things in bigger ways when you're using something than when you're natural. So um, butter is great for raising HDL cholesterol, which is something that I need. However, it is also great at raising LDL cholesterol, which is something that I don't need. Whether or not that's the good or bad LDL that's being raised, I don't know. But um, as a whole, I'm trying to bring my LDL down as much as I can to get it to at least 100 or less. Right now I'm at 122. When I, in July, it was 180 something. So I'm bringing this thing down. Um, that's the main reason I'm not using any butter and I'm using algae oil and extra virgin olive oil. Like those are the reasons that I'm doing that. Like there's absolutely nothing wrong with using butter, real butter, Kerrygold, grass-fed beef butter, but there's a time and a place for everything. You know, you have to make good decisions on you know, your fats and all that. I've used tons of Kerrygold butter though. It's great. Absolutely the best butter. This is from Sky Kill. What's the lowest resting pulse rate you've ever had, Chase? The lowest that my resting pulse has ever been has been about the high 40s. 
Um, of course, that's when I was running, like running a lot, doing lots of cardio. But yeah, right now, it, it the lowest that it gets is like when I'm sleeping, it, it gets like the high 50s. When I'm up and walking around, like uh, they probably asked this because I saw on my blood pressure uh, reading, it, it had my pulse rate and it was like 60 something. Um, so yeah, when I'm awake and moving around and or sitting and getting a blood pressure reading it's in the 60s um when i'm sleeping it's in the high 50s but the lowest that it's ever been is the high 40s you know while at rest so but yeah that was when i was doing a shitload of cardio running my ass off early this year usually i go every year i get on a running kick probably not gonna happen this next year but yeah that's uh that's what it was lopez asks do you recommend to give red blood cells, plasm, or pure blood? I recommend whole blood. Pure blood. Whole blood. It's whole blood. Um, I recommend whole blood. That way it's just it's just taking everything out. Because if you give red blood cells, they take out the red blood cells, but they put everything back in, and that doesn't really help a whole lot for blood pressure. I mean, it, it does a little bit, but to ensure that you're lowering your hemoglobin, to ensure that you're lowering... Uh, your blood pressure to the best possible ability by doing this stuff. Um, whole blood is what you want to do. Nick Garwood, we've got two questions for you. First, you said in an earlier video that you take 30 minutes and drink your pre-workout. For me, Total War seems to last about 1.5 hours and then there's a sudden drop. If I took 30 minutes to drink it, I'd hit the wall only like 30 minutes into my workout. Don't you have a problem with this? But I was also wondering if drinking it earlier had something to do with increasing the effectiveness of big noise. Yeah, I don't really experience a crash with Total War. I don't, I really don't notice that. Like I have really good workouts and I have plenty of energy throughout the workout. And I wonder if that has something to do with the fact that I'm also drinking um, intro workout. I'm having, I'm having Cluster Bomb, which is dextrose and I'm having uh, my Tango and Grunt, which is creatine and EAAs, um, I'm having that intro workout. So I wonder if that helps, you know, me extend the energy throughout my workout better than somebody that isn't. He didn't mention if he's using that or not, but that's kind of my first thought. But yeah, I I don't notice a crash from Total War. Um, my energy is good throughout the workout, but usually like I drink that and then I go straight to the gym. I mean, you guys see, I, I drink it and then I make my intro workout and I head out and it takes me like 10 minutes to get to the gym. So if, even if it only lasted an hour and a half is what is, he said it works for him, even then it would still, I'd still get all the way through my workout because I really don't work out longer than an hour. So yeah, if he's taking 30 minutes to drink it and it wears out 30 minutes into his workout, that must mean he has like 30 minutes to get to a gym or whatever. So my recommendation for you would be make your shake and drink it on your way to the gym so that you finish it as soon as you're done drinking it. But also I don't think that the whole like the time that caffeine is working, I don't feel like, you know, it starts as soon as you start sipping it. I, like I would say that once you're completely done drinking it, then you have however much time until uh, it gets out of your system. But I mean, everybody's different. Everybody goes through caffeine different. So, um, yeah, if that's the way that you feel with it, then I highly recommend drinking it on your way to the gym so that you finish it as you are getting started. Um, if this means you need to pack another shaker bottle for your intro workout drink, then that's just what you got to do to get the job done. So, um, that's what I would do if I were you. My second question is, do you have any thoughts on who will be the next Mr. Olympia? Do you think Regan Grimes has a chance? I'm just curious. I don't think Regan has a chance this year. I don't think he'll have a chance next year. I think that Brandon Curry is probably gonna win it again, unless Phil Heath comes back and has his waist fixed. Um, if that was like a real thing, that he had like a hernia issue, and that's what was screwing him up, then um, then I think Phil can easily come back and win it. But yeah, if Phil doesn't come back, I think Brandon will win it again, unless Big Ramy finally dials it in and comes in the way that he needs to come in, 
and then it's it's a real toss up. Yeah, I think it's a, a huge toss up between Big Ramy and Brandon Curry. Um, I don't think William Bonac will ever win the Mr. Olympia. I just don't think he has the shape for it. He's very he has a very weird look about him. It's kind of like it's similar to like Kai Green but smaller and just not as I mean Kai Green wasn't didn't have like a pretty build. It was freaky, but yeah, that's how I think of William. And um, Hadi Shupin, uh, he looks great. Yeah, I think he should have gotten second. I just don't know if he's gonna be like, I don't know if he can add any more mass to his frame. Yeah, I feel like him and William Bonek are both kind of like maxed out because they're not very tall. Sorry guys, the sun went down, it just got a little dark. So yeah, I I think it'll be between Brandon Curry and Big Ramy. Um, as far as like Regan Grimes goes, I think he's got a lot of time to build still. I think if anybody has a shot to win the Mr. Olympia before Regan does, I think it'll be Luke Sando. I think, you know, once he gets a few years down the line, he'll be big enough and lean enough to tear that up. And uh, he'll be kind of like, I feel like he'll be the next in line, sort of. Um, and then once kind of Luke has ran his time out of being like top three Olympia, about that time is when I feel like Regan will be coming into his own and start getting top three at the Olympia. So I wouldn't expect Regan to get top three for about five years from now. All right, next question from Vladimir Putin. I'm glad he watches my channel. Do you ever recommend Anadrol? I mean, I recommend Anadrol, I recommend D-Ball. I think that they're best um, used in cutting cycles because they blunt hunger very well. Um, if you are hungry, get on an oral drug. Keep in mind, you have to be willing to sacrifice your blood lipids. You have to be, uh, you have to understand that this is what's going to happen when you use this stuff. It's going to fuck with your liver and it's going to fuck with your blood. Not that you will physically be able to feel any of that. Not that you'll notice that your health is declining, but these are things that happen that we don't think about. And that's why I have a hard time recommending anything to anybody because I just don't feel like anybody understands the consequences of using this stuff long-term and thinking that because they feel okay, because they feel fine, everything is fine. Monday, two days ago. So I've talked about this before, how when a bodybuilder dies, that's popular, that's famous. When a famous bodybuilder dies, like Rich Piana or Dallas McCarver, people were like, well, that's two guys out of how many bodybuilders are there in the world? There's millions of bodybuilders. Those are the only two famous ones that have died recently at a young age that were from drug complications, that were because of being a bodybuilder, flat out. We have no idea how many people who are nobodies, who are absolute nobodies that have died trying to become somebody in this sport that have died using steroids because they didn't understand the consequences that came with it. They didn't understand what you have to do to stay healthy. They didn't understand that it was wrecking their insides. And that's, that's what my channel is all about. That's what I'm trying to do is let you guys know that you, you've got to go get your blood work done. If you're scared to get your blood work done, then you should not be using steroids, period. You should not be doing it. If you're not willing to spend the money to go do that, you should not be spending the money to do this. Because there are, there are tons of people dying that are nobodies, that we don't hear about. Just because two famous guys died, you don't think there are a bunch of random dudes out there that are dropping dead every day from heart attacks at the age of 30 to 40? Just Monday. And none of you know this person. Nobody knows who this guy is. Completely unknown dude. He was a worker at Export. 
at a gym that, not that I used to work at, but in the same company that I used to work at. And the, that's the only reason I know about this is because people that worked at Export were posting rest in peace to this guy's page. He's 40, he was 44, he died of a heart attack. Dude was a competitor, was shredded year round. He was, you know, with it, it was posted on NPC Illinois' Facebook page that he passed away. Any of you guys could go look that up. If he was a bodybuilder for the NPC, that means he was untested. He was, uh, anybody that's in the NPC is not natural or they're planning on not being natural sometime soon. Unless they're Greg Doucette and going through it naturally because you're a badass, but highly unlikely that this guy was natural. And if he was natural, he wouldn't have had a fucking heart attack at the age of 44 looking the way that he did because he, was a, he appeared to be in amazing shape, very lean, and always very lean. And that is kind of a big sign that he was probably, unfortunately, probably using something like Tren or, or Anavar or Winstraw, things like these that keep you super lean year round. And just slowly, because if you do that kind of stuff year round, year after year after year, your HDL cholesterol is going to be zero. Your LDL cholesterol is going to be skyrocketed. You're just going to be, your body is going to be laying down layers of plaque in your arteries, around your heart, until it closes up and you have a heart attack. I'm not saying that's what happened to this guy, but he's 44, looked in amazing shape, and he died of a heart attack. That, that, that's, and he was a bodybuilder. Don't be stupid, guys, okay? Make good decisions. Be smart about what you're doing because this shit can cost you your life if you are stupid. And that's all that there is to it, is just being plain stupid and uneducated, being a moron that doesn't understand that when you're injecting drugs, there are huge consequences if you do it recklessly and ignorantly. I guarantee we're gonna be seeing a lot more, a lot more in the next 10 years. More and more people are gonna be dropping dead because I feel like my generation of bodybuilder is extremely careless. And as my group, my generation gets into the late 30s, 40s, 50s, they're gonna be dropping dead because because they're being stupid. Because they don't, I don't know, it's not that they're being stupid, they just don't know. They're just uninformed. They went into something absolutely not ready to, to face the consequences. They, they just weren't ready, weren't not ready to do any of this. And I think one of the big reasons why I talk about this so much is because I was the same way. I was so ignorant. I thought I, th I, thought I could get away with using absolutely whatever I wanted as long as I wanted. And like I had been on trend for a very long time. I did it for a year and I stayed in great shape, but I never got my blood tested. I had no idea what was going on. I was scared to death of what was going on. And I finally, thank God, I finally was able to stop and take a break from it and take a step back. And, and without something terrible happening before, like I did not face any negative consequence from what I had done through all of that. And here I am now being as careful as possible because I don't want to die when I'm 40, when I'm 50. And, uh, you know, I may have taken some years off of my life being stupid in my 20s, but hopefully I'll still get to 70 or 80, you know? It's just, but that's, I, again, that's why I'm so concerned about my health and paying attention to this kind of stuff and being very, very conservative with my doses. And because like people are like, you were using 500 tests and 250 NPP, like that's not a cycle. What is that? That's TRT. And I made good progress on it. And I came out the other side with pretty damn good blood work. Like the blood work that I had yesterday, that's after running a four month cycle. And it came out pretty damn good. I'm very happy with how that looked. 
And now I'm going to spend the next two months. I mean, it's going to be longer than two months. I'm going to be spending the next two months on nothing but test. And it's going to get even better. And I'm just going to get, you know, better blood. Everything's going to look better, much better over the next couple months. And I'm just going to keep riding that train. You know, I'm kind of taking on this whole idea of being an HRT bodybuilder where I use testosterone and HGH in moderate doses, you know? Yeah, anyway, went off on a tangent on that one, Vladimir, sorry. All right, last question, guys. We made it, made it to the end. I think bone structure will play a big part in the total as well. He's talking about what is, a, what is um, achievable naturally as a natural when I made that Natty or Not video and how to know. Big boned 5'10 person will be heavier than a small boned person with the same body fat. And I'm not saying it's 50 to 70 pounds difference, but maybe 15 to 20 at most. Big boned, small boned, first of all, I hate those uh, terms. The difference in bone size, the difference in like bone thickness, whether or not you're big boned or small boned, is going to be centimeters millimeters, very small amounts of difference between the thickness of your bones. The biggest difference in bones is gonna be from height, them being longer, longer, taller, height, not thickness. I mean, the taller you get, the bigger you are, yeah, the thicker your bones will be, but <laughs> if you're comparing people of the exact same height, there's gonna be very, very small differences. The differences between somebody being an endomorph, an ectomorph, and a mesomorph, which, you know, are real things based on the size of your joints, the size of your bones, but it's very, 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 very small, very small, very small differences in those. And certainly will not be a difference of 50 to 15 to 20 pounds difference in how much somebody can hold more muscle, you know, with somebody at the exact same body fat percentages. It just doesn't, it doesn't, no, they, it's, no, you're wrong. It's not, it doesn't work that way. Um, uh, and let's just call it like this, instead of saying big boned and normal boned and small boned, let's say big boned is endomorph and then normal bone would be mesomorph and then small bone maybe would be ectomorph. If you've got small bones and you've got big bones and you're five foot 10 and you're 170 pounds and 6% body fat, it is what it is. You're gonna be the same and you're most likely, like if you're five foot 10 and 170 pounds and 6% body fat, you're both pretty well peaked. Like it's going to be based on your genetics as far as like how much testosterone you've naturally got going through your system, how much, uh, growth hormone, how high your IGF-1 is, those things are gonna play a bigger role in what's going on inside your body, whether or not um, you can build more muscle beyond that point. Being five foot 10, 170 pounds and 6% body fat is pretty well peaked though, no matter if you're an endomorph, an ectomorph or a mesomorph. But the whole big boned thing, I mean, this guy is saying 15 to 20 pounds. That's, uh, that's, pretty ridiculous. I mean, the whole big boned idea. I was talking about this the other day. Like guys, when you look at say, and I'm going to pick on women for a second because typically they have uh, women hold fat in their hips a lot more than men do. So I'm going to pick on women for a second. And I, I'm sure this is a uh, alarming to a lot of you, but let's, let's just do this. <sighs> All right. So let's take a skinny woman right here, skinny, fit, athletic woman. Well, let's not say that. Let's just say woman with low body fat percentage. And then here let's put woman with very high body fat percentage with very wide hips. Do you really think that these two have different bone structures? Do you really think that this very high body fat percentage woman who has hips that appear to be 60 inches around, do you really think 
that her hip bones are actually this wide? Or do you think that there are like a foot of fat on each side of her hip bones and her hip bones are the exact same size as this lower body fat percentage woman? I'm gonna give you a hint, they're the same size. They have the exact same bone structure. You're not going to have somebody that has hip bones that are a foot, two foot wider on each side compared to another woman. They're not gonna be that dramatic unless you're a fucking mongoloid caveman person with fucked up bones and you've been using a shitload of HGH and you've got crazy calcium buildup on your hips. No, it doesn't work that way. Your hip bone, your bones are not that different. Like women's hip bones, they're big, they're wider than men's, but they're all the same. They're all the same size. The only difference is gonna be if you're taller. If you're super fucking tall, they're going to be proportioned to match that tallness. But somebody that has hips that are this fucking wide do not have hip bones that are this fucking wide. <laughs> like, like my hips right now are probably 44 inches round. When I diet and I get down to like the low 200s, they're down to like 36 inches around. Did I shrink my hip bones? No, the fat from the sides of the hip bones disappeared. So please don't ever say big boned again, because <laughs> big boned is just, it's not, it's not a thing. It's not a real thing. If you look up big boned, you're gonna see a picture of a normal skeleton. You're gonna see a picture of a big boned skeleton. Guess what? The picture of the normal skeleton is normal. The picture of the, the big boned skeleton, you might think, oh yeah, that makes sense. That an obese person's body fits on that bone structure. No, it's a fucking gorilla. It's a gorilla, okay? That's a gorilla's bone structure. They chop the head off and put on a person's head. It's not a big boned person, it's a fucking gorilla, okay? So, um, that's that. That's all that I had to share with you guys today, I hope you learned a little something from today's video and got a little glimpse into what I deal with for questions on a daily basis, which I do love. I love your guys' questions. I love your comments. Please keep them coming because it helps me make videos like this. And then, you know, you ask a good enough question, maybe I will put it in a video someday. So um, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you so much for your support. I'm gonna finish this meal and I gotta go work out. So thanks for stopping by. Remember, nobody cares, train harder, and I will see you all tomorrow.